Hi, I'm Dr. Simon Fry, the consultant in clinical neurophysiology, back with the channel. In this little series of videos, we're going to be exploring the effects of aging on the human brain. Please do show your support for the channel by hitting that like and subscribe down below. And without further ado, let's start by asking a couple of interesting questions. What do we mean by aging? When does it start? Is this inevitable? What are the features of aging on the brain? How does that reflect in the brain waves? When does aging become pathological? Is there such a thing as healthy aging? What can we do to promote it? All of these are really fascinating questions and we'll be exploring them in more detail as we go through. Let's start by looking at what the human brain looks like as we become older. The brain on the right is a mature adult brain. And the one on the left is one from someone who's already a fair bit older. And we can see quite striking shrinkage of the brain. And in fact, the process of shrinkage starts to occur from about the age of 40, by about 5% per decade, until we reach the age of about 70, where it starts to accelerate even further. All parts of the brain will shrink, but some more than others. We know that the grey matter, which houses the uh, brain cells per se, um, is that shrinks. Also, the white matter, where all the cabling occurs as well, also shrinks. But certain parts of the brain shrink faster than others. So, for example, the frontal part of the brain, which deals with executive functions, the striatum, which is involved in initiation of movement, amongst other things, um, the temporal regions of the brain, which house uh, memory, for example, um, are all preferentially affected. Some of the posterior parts of the brain, perhaps less so. And as the brain begins to shrink, we get an increase in the fluid spaces around the brain. Now, in terms of cognitive manifestations, how does that reveal itself? We know that as people become older, the speed of thought uh, decreases, memory impairment across all different domains becomes uh, more of a feature, whether it's related to events, related to language, tasks, and so on, ability to reason, executive function, various sensations, particularly our hearing, becomes impaired as we become older. There are lots of potential mechanisms involved in the ageing process and any one of these uh, items listed over here would really be a series of lectures in of themselves. But if I could try and summarise the, the general flavour of what we understand, all living matter requires energy to exist, to be, to do things. And um, within the human body, there is a myriad of chemical reactions going on in all of our cells uh, all of the time. And we need to be able to produce energy in sufficient quantities, but also when we produce energy, there are waste products which have to be removed. And so if we have problems with either generating energy or clearing the waste, or clearing the toxins, or um, there are impairments in the repair processes or in the growth uh, processes, then um, any of those will lead eventually to a buildup of damage, and that damage over time becomes exponentially faster and therefore um, the uh, toxic effects and uh, really the damaging effects become more and more pronounced and that's really what happens in the aging process and which is also one of the reasons that as people age the process of aging becomes faster and we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit later. So when we think about aging, particularly with regard to the brain, it's actually not just about the brain. It's a, it's a multi-system process where lots of things are, in fact, going wrong and going wrong exponentially. So if we start having a look at different creatures and start looking at doing some comparative biology, it's really very fascinating because here's a, a small selection of, of animals I've photographed over the years. But, you know, let's take a sloth, for example. Its lifespan is about 25 years. There's no real difference to that of a pelican and a cow, which is about 20 or so years. Lions and tigers we think of as being uh, faster um, living creatures, living for about 12, 15 years respectively. Um, but, you know, if you put those same creatures into a zoo um, where you look after them, there's no predation, there's plenty of food, there's a healthcare plan and so on, actually their lifespans, although they do increase, but in absolute terms, they don't really increase that dramatically. So let's just take um, a, a male lion, for example. They live 10 to 12 years out in the wild, put them into a zoo, suddenly they're living for about 15 years. Now, in a relative uh, term, um, that obviously that's a 50% increase, but in absolute terms, it's really not that much. So, you know, the, there are real questions as to, you know, what is it about any particular species that basically programs in a, a certain amount of lifespan? 
we take, for example, a camel, that's about 40 years, it's no different really to many of the larger primates, but yet human beings, which are pretty similar, can live 80 to 100 years without much uh, problem. If we start looking at marine creatures, let's take the bow-headed uh, whale, for example, that can live for 200 years. A Greenland shark, which is obviously smaller, can easily live for about 270 years. Um, let's have a look at various uh, aquatic plants. So black coral can do four and a half thousand years and the giant barrel sponges can do about two and a half thousand years. Why is there a difference between these different things? What about the immortal jellyfish, uh, which can seemingly live forever. So there are very innate characteristics to every species which will predetermine effectively what its lifespan can be. So moving back towards the, the human brain, um, obviously we've talked about certain physical changes um, that can occur in terms of shrinkage and certainly there's loss of neurons, loss of dendrites, but also there's a, a, a impairment of how synapses, the connections between uh, cells develop or are maintained through time. But it's not just physical changes, we need to start thinking about functional changes too. An interesting example is something called Harold, where when we are young certain um, tasks can really be quite localized to one particular part of the brain, to one particular hemisphere. And as we get older, it becomes more distributed across both hemispheres and in different places. And there's real interesting questions as to whether this is um, a, a maturation process or whether this is a compensatory process um, as things become dysfunctional. And ultimately, when we think about the brain, we need to think about um, aspects of damage, maintenance and compensation. This brings us very neatly onto the scaffolding theory of aging, which takes into account the entire life course um, of our existence. So we are who we are in terms of how we are born, our genes, um, our immediate um, environment in terms of nutrition, uh, safety, uh, education, um, cultural experiences, which can all act as uh, resources of neural enrichment. And of course, there are aspects as well, which can be negative in terms of uh, toxin exposures, uh, head traumas, uh, stresses and depression and so on, which can act as uh, neuronal resource depletion. And the brain is constantly changing both in terms of its structure and its function. And through time, um, the brain can actually work in various compensatory uh, aspects to try and improve its situation. So we are who we are in terms of how we are born, um, but through our life course, we can actually start to change um, the trajectory of what happens with our brain and, and how it's structured really and how it functions by doing either positive or negative uh, things to it. So when do problems start, or better still, when do problems start to get noticed? So problems really start from the get-go. It's just that we don't necessarily notice it for the first 20 or 30 years uh, of our life um, span because at that point the, the brain and the neuronal tissues are still in a state of uh, generation and development. But there comes a point where things start to plateau and then things start to um, to, to become depleted and, and, and things start to get noticed. And as, as I said at the very beginning, about the age of 40, we start to get brain shrinkage. And interestingly, just moving away slightly from the brain, um, there were a variety of studies looking at combat casualties at Vietnam and beforehand in Korea, and looking at the arteries, the coronary arteries, the heart arteries of uh, young soldiers uh, killed in battle. And even um, in people's 20s, they're already the earliest star signs and stages of coronary artery disease, yellow streaks and so on, already beginning to form. So even though these are not things which will have manifested themselves into uh, until people have reached the age of, let's say, 60 or so, the seeds of degeneration are already actually planted many years beforehand. And interestingly, if we go back almost uh, 200 years to the work of Gompertz, so he was an actuarial scientist, um, and he started to try and work out uh, what human lifespans uh, were and the properties of them. And very interestingly, um, his formula, which basically holds uh, very much true to this day, effectively predicts that as we become older, our mortality rates become exponentially larger. And so 
the idea really of aging and, and healthy aging is trying to shift the curve to the right. This is a, a, an interesting study which uh, looked at the uh, survival of people in Sweden from the 1950s to 2010. And you can see there's a rightward shift as people's um, age becomes uh, older by the point that they uh, have passed away. But it's not just that the shape of the curve uh, changes as well. So it's less curved and it becomes more square. And so that gives us a hint perhaps that um, as we get towards our older age, the processes of degeneration can actually occur relatively rapidly um, in terms of our mortality. But we're not gonna go into frailty in, in, in this particular video. But the other thing, interesting thing, is if you have a look at the bottom of the curve, the human lifespan hasn't really shifted very much from 100 to 110. So although on the whole we are living longer, there is an inherent um, lifespan to a human being. So what can we do to reduce the rate of brain aging? And the truth is it actually starts now. Whatever age you are at, the process of trying to improve how we are when we are older literally starts now. Whether it's doing cognitive exercises, social exercises where we interact with other people, stress management's very important because depression is very bad for the brain in terms of aging, in terms of other things as well. Physical exercise, healthy foods, toxin avoidance, and more details on any of those um, can be found from the National Institute on Aging, and I'll put a link below. So I hope that's been helpful. Uh, please do show your support for the channel by hitting that uh, like and, and uh, share and subscribe and so on. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video where we're going to start exploring the effects of aging on the EEG. All the very best. Stay safe.